Morning folks, um, I've been up a little while. I slept superbly well last night, I was nice and warm. Um, and woke up this morning to frost. The ground was, um, all the leaves were frozen underfoot. And, um, but a beautiful blue sky, gorgeous morning, absolutely stunning. So um, I had a couple of cups of coffee down by the water's edge, which was lovely. I've just made some pancakes for breakfast. Um, Andy's not very well. He, um, he seems to be running a, a temperature. I don't know whether he's picked up some sort of bug or something, but he was, he was ill during the night. Um, and um, he's tucked up in bed at the moment, really not feeling very well at all. So I don't know um, what our plan is gonna be for the day. Obviously, we, we were intending to paddle on to the next campsite, but um, you know we need to kind of see how Andy is and play it by ear, really. Give, give, give him a chance to rest a bit and um, see how he feels uh, a bit later on and then we can make a make a decision but um, for the meantime I'm going to tuck into this enormous <laughs> stack of pancakes because I'm really hungry um, bought some syrup to go on it I think it's just kind of like a golden syrup um, but I'm sure that will do just the job oh it's a thick syrup Well, I've left Andy back at the at the Dano hut. He's absolutely sparko, and uh, I've come out for a paddle by myself. Um, it's a beautiful day, and uh, the lake is a little bit choppier than yesterday. It's not bad, so um, I thought I'd just have a paddle in the direction that we were heading yesterday and uh, see what's what, really. better. Dead calm in here. Although it's sunny today, it is still quite cold. That's the woolly hat and layers. But absolutely stunning and bright and gorgeous. The colors are just amazing. I thought it might be a good idea to show you on the map um, whereabouts we are and how far we've come so far. Just to kind of put it in perspective, really. So this is kind of half of the lake. Um, the other half is on the other the other page. Um, down here is the town of Ed, and Canadale is where we hired the canoes from. So yesterday we crossed over the lake, and then we paddled up this side. Uh, that's where the waterfall was, and um, we paddled up here, and then we stayed in that hut just there, that Dano. 
and uh, this morning, obviously Andy is still there, <laughs> um, and then this morning I paddled up here, I crossed over that bit here which was quite choppy, and I'm just tucked in, I think I probably must be in this area just here, yeah, yeah, just here, um, where those kind of like fingers are, because I can see that little island directly opposite me, so that's sort of where I am at the moment, but I think I'm going to turn back from here um, and go and see how Andy's doing. I don't want to leave him too long feeling unwell. It's bad enough feeling unwell as it is, but kind of being abandoned <laughs> in the middle of uh, in the middle of the Swedish wilderness. I better go back and see how he's getting on. So uh, yeah, I, I don't think we're going to be paddling to to up here, which is kind of where we were hoping to get today. You know, if I even if I do go back and Andy's feeling better, that we still then got to paddle against the wind all the way up here to perhaps this island or even this campsite up the top there. So we'll just have to, um, we'll probably just have another night here and see how he's doing tomorrow, I think. I've just had some lunch. It's um, a bit tricky to film really today because obviously Andy isn't feeling very well and um, I'm sure he doesn't really want to be on camera. But uh, yeah, just had the um, same sort of thing as yesterday, polar bread and, and cheese. And uh, Andy did kind of get up for a couple of minutes. He says he's not feeling sick anymore but he's just aching really badly like a kind of almost like a flu he's definitely got a temperature but um we'll have to see how it goes he's just gone back to bed again and he's going to try and eat something a bit later on he said so we'll uh, we'll see how it goes and um fingers crossed he might feel a bit better tomorrow and we can we can push on to the next campsite i don't know whether anybody is planning on using this day note tonight um, you know, obviously the idea is that you only use them for one night and then you move on so other people can follow behind. I don't know whether there are any groups coming on the lake today. But um, if there are, they're going to have to share the hut with <laughs> a very poorly Andy and me. Following on from the uh, 
the little bit I did on my cook kit. Um, this section is going to be on my clothing and personal items. Ah. I've picked a very comfortable rock to sit on here. <laughs> so if I just start with what I'm wearing at the moment, I've got a, a fleece on. It's just a thin fleece, but a kind of windstopper fleece. Um, I love this thing. I've had it for years and um, you know, it just, it just does the job. It's not the warmest of fleeces, but because it keeps the wind off, um, you know, it works, it works really well. Underneath there, I've got a, a kind of wicking t-shirt. And then underneath that, I've got a, a merino long sleeved base layer. Um, and that is kind of, that's what I came out here in. That's what I wore on the plane. And that's what I've been wearing uh, so far on this trip. On my head, I've got a woolen hat. It's a pure wool hat. And trousers wise, I've got a pair of um, Fial Raven trousers, the same ones that I wear all the time. On my feet, just because I was out in the canoe earlier on, um, I've got a pair of neoprene boots. Um, these are five millimeters thick, so they're, they're good and warm, made by Palm. They've got a really good sole on the bottom, um, sort of semi-rigid, so they're comfortable for walking around on these rocks and uneven ground. Um, so that's good. Obviously, you know, keeps my feet dry in the canoe and warm. Even if they're wet, they stay warm. And then underneath that, I've got a pair of um, seal skins waterproof socks and that is it for what i'm wearing obviously apart from underwear and well that's just underwear <laughs> so in addition to the woolly hat that i've got on um, i also bought my tilly hat um, you know you'll have seen me wear this in lots of videos i love the thing it's great to keep the sun off my eyes to keep the rain and snow and stuff off my face and um, it's just really comfortable for my hands, I've got um, a pair of leather gloves, which I showed you in my cook kit. Um, they're really mainly for just working around the fire, picking up hot things. Um, I also have a pair of mittens with me. These are a fibre pile mitten with a Pertex shell on the outside made by Buffalo. And um, I find these to be the best thing to keep my hands warm. I have real problems with my hands getting cold. Uh, you know, they get cold quickly. I feel the cold in my hands. Um, and, and gloves don't really do it for me. Um, I haven't found a pair of gloves yet that keep my hands warm. Mittens do. Um, and these are great because even if they're sopping wet, they're really good at keeping your hands warm. Um, so yeah, I love these and they're really light and they just, you know, they're tiny. They, 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 ro they roll up, they scrunch up to almost nothing. And um, yeah, really good mittens, big fan. I also have a pair of sunglasses because, um, you know, especially when you're on the water, you get a lot of glare that uh, along with the um, the bright sunshine that we're having in Sweden at the moment you know I just need to have something to protect my eyes otherwise I'm just going to be squinting and I'll give myself a headache so uh, sunglasses are really important rain wear I have a, a pair of very thin waterproof trousers um, these are by low alpine they're really thin they're really light um, you know if I was walking on a walking trip, I would probably wear something a bit better than this because obviously your legs are moving, you're, you're sweating, and these tend to um, not be as breathable as, as some other more expensive trousers. But when you're canoeing, it's, it's not really such an issue. You know, you really just want something to keep the splashes off and, um, and to keep the rain off if it does pour down. So I don't mind having a slightly less breathable um, pair of waterproofs for canoeing. And the fact that they're nice and small you know, the, the real issue with this trip was getting everything that I needed to bring below a certain um, limit so that it could go in the, in the hold of the aircraft when we flew over. Um, and uh, so, you know, weight was critical, actually. Um, top half, I've got my waterproof smock. You'll have seen this in, in other videos. Um, this is made by Paramo. Um, more important for me is, is to have a breathable top half because obviously that's where I'm working when, when you're canoeing, you know, you can, you can, you can get very hot canoeing, um, you know, even if it's raining. And this thing is just brilliant. It's super, super breathable. I absolutely swear by this Paramo stuff. Um, I have nothing to do with the company. I just <laughs> really like their gear. Right, warm layers. Um, aside from my fleece, I've got my 
woolen bush shirt. Um, this is homemade and I have a video on this if you're interested. Um, it doesn't have to be purple. <laughs> Mine just turned out that way. It was meant to be brown. But um, yeah, the dye made it come out purple for some reason. Um, but yeah, this is, this is great. It's, it's just like wearing a blanket because it is a blanket. Really warm and um, ideal for around the fire because I haven't got to worry about sparks making holes in my clothing or anything like that or anything like that because it's it's made from wool and it's fairly spark resistant. So yeah, that's that's uh, my kind of go-to number one warm layer. I also have a synthetic um, insulated jacket. This one here by Montaigne. This is the Prism jacket. Um, it's not very thick, but the insulation in it is really good. Um, you know, it absolutely does the job. It's primal loft insulation, and um, sort of like for its weight, it's it's as good as down really. Um, but the the bonus being that it works still even if it's even if it gets damp. You know, it still it still insulates, unlike down, which kind of loses all of its insulation properties as soon as it gets wet. So that's that's a great jacket, and I brought that really as a just in case. Um, but I also like the fact that it packs into this little pouch here and I actually use that as my pillow at night. So uh, that kind of has two, two um, purposes. I also bought a pair of Buffalo, like my gloves, fiber pile and Pertex trousers. Um, and this was really just in case. Um, I can put these on at night, I can sleep in them because my sleeping bag is only rated down to zero degrees. I was also thinking that if either of us uh, take a dunk accidentally, um, you know, it can happen, the wind can, wind can pick up, you can get quite a swell on these lakes and, um, you know, you just never know. If, if one of us does capsize, um, it's really important to get dry and get some, something warm on quickly. Um, so these would be ideal for that. These and my insulated jacket here would be a kind of perfect combination really just for rapidly getting warm again. For footwear, you saw my neoprene boots. I also bought a pair of Crocs, which I know is controversial and um, you either love them or you hate them. I love Crocs, um, I find them really comfortable. Um, they're super light, so you know, obviously weight in my bag wasn't an issue. They float, which is good on a canoe trip, um, and obviously they're just made of kind of plasticky rubber stuff, so it doesn't matter if they get wet, they just drip dry, you know, drying them is not a problem, and um, they're just easy to slip on. If I get up in the middle of the night, climb out of my hammock and just wanna go for a pee or anything like that, you know, I can just slip these on and I haven't got to mess around with doing laces up or anything like that, so. And then we come to the kind of additional changes of clothing, I suppose. Um, you know, I, I'm quite happy to, to be a bit of a skank when I'm camping, but we're away for five days and I'm camping with somebody else and, you know, you have to be a little bit hygienic just to not be too antisocial. So I have bought changes of clothing. I've bought a spare pair of trousers. These are really thin poly cotton trousers. It might have been optimistic, <laughs> but I have got a pair of shorts. I didn't know how warm it would be, and I thought, well, if I do want to have a swim, I've got some shorts that I can swim in. I've got um, another merino base layer. I've got a spare pair of pants, and I brought two spare pairs of socks. I've got some merino long johns, and I've got another very thin fleece, super thin, even thinner than this, like one of those micro grid kind of fleeces. Um, again, just really more as a, as a layer to put on if my first lot get wet, if I, if I do accidentally go in the, go in the water. Because I paddle in this stuff, you know? I, I don't have specific paddling clothing. I paddle in normal clothes, so that is my fleece, that is my base layer. If I go in, it's all gonna get soaking wet. I need to have something I can put on while that lot dry. I'm gonna include my kind of personal hygiene kit um, with my clothing, because it's all kind of personal stuff. Um, so I have a microfiber towel. I bought this initially for sort of drying myself, think, thinking down those lines, but actually it's become really useful for drying pots and pans and, uh, you know, everything else as well. So it's a kind of general purpose towel, really. And then I have a pouch here with all of my kind of personal hygiene stuff in. I have a small bar of soap in here. This is like a biodegradable, um, you know, eco-friendly bar of soap for washing. I have a pack of um, tissues in here for the obvious. I have a trowel, again, for the obvious. Although um, toilets are generally provided in all, all of the um, spots that we're camping on. They do have um, composting toilets, which is great, but I have got a small trowel just in case I get sh caught short 
uh, between camps to dig a cat hole. I've got toothbrush and toothpaste. I have some sun cream. Again, uh, you know, it is sunny. It might not be that warm, but it is sunny. Um, SPF 30, just to uh, make sure I don't burn. I've got a small aerosol deodorant, and that's really more for Andy's sake than for me, because, um, you know, I don't want to be really antisocial, stinking of BO. That'll help. And mosquito repellent. We actually haven't seen a single mosquito since we've been here. <laughs> we might be a little bit early in the season, I'm not sure. It's, it's also cold this week, perhaps last week when it was warmer they might have been about, but um, yeah, I haven't had any problems so far. I did put this on the first night, but I didn't probably need to. But um, yeah, that is, if you're coming any later in the year, if you're coming through the summer, this is absolutely essential. Essential mosquito repellent. So there you go, that is all my clothing and uh, personal sort of hygiene kit. And um, yeah, so far it's worked, it's worked for me. Obviously we're, we're early on, we're only, we're only day two into the trip. So, um, you know, I'll keep you posted through the videos and uh, let you know if I've made any fatal errors with regards to clothing. But um, so far it all seems to be good. fun. <laughs> the waves are a bit quieter on this side. On the other side, the side we're on, is obviously the wind must be channeled down that side of the lake and uh, there's quite a bit of swell. It's a bit on this side but yeah, it's a bit choppy. And the thing is with the waves on a lake because they're caught by the wind blowing, um, they're really close together. They're not like waves, waves on the sea. They're close together, so you haven't kind of got a chance to recover from one after the next one is on you. So you've sort of got to have your wits about you, really. But I'm nearly over the other side now. And uh, that bit of weather that's just, that's just blown through is um, it's just about gone. You look in that direction, look. It's uh, sort of clearish again. Ooh. Yeah, so we had our dinner and um, Andy has gone back to bed. He's just going to try and sleep now till the morning. Try and sleep whatever this is that he's got. Try and, just try and sleep it off. He's got some food in his belly, which is good. That should help. But he's, he's struggling to keep warm. He's got all of his layers on, he's got every stitch of clothing he brought with him on and he's still cold, which I guess is just what happens when you've got the sort of chills, isn't it? But um, he's gonna, well he has got himself in his sleeping bag, I think he's a bit warmer now. So uh, I'm gonna leave him to it and I thought well I'd just make the most of the evening. Beautiful evening that it was. <laughs> and paddle across the lake and see what the other side is like. It's all big cliffs, we could see them from where we were. Dying to come over and have a have a look. They look dark and sinister, <laughs> but I'm sure that's uh, that's more to do with the weather. Right then, head back. 
See the fire's still going. There you go, that's where I just was. Look at the lake now, it's like a mill pond. They have a saying about Sweden, if you don't like the weather here, wait five minutes. <laughs> Quite true today. It looks like there's another bank of nasties coming in from that direction. Well, it's been a funny sort of day, really. Uh, a bit of an unexpected day. You know, in, in all honesty, we we sort of expected to be further along the lake and um, up on the island by tonight. But uh, obviously that hasn't, that hasn't happened because Andy's been unwell. Um, so uh, yeah, it's not quite panned out how we expected it to. But he, he seems to be perking up a bit but really we're just going to have to we're just going to have to wait and see how he is tomorrow and, uh, and make a decision about tomorrow um yeah it's been an interesting day weather wise we've had some really nice bright weather woke up to beautiful just almost cloudless sky gorgeous and um and we've had a, a couple of bits of uh, bits of rain come through um the one that you saw earlier when I was paddling across the lake <laughs> just came out of nowhere um, and uh, yeah it's a really pleasant evening now really calm the lake is just super calm now it's crazy yeah but we'll just have to see what happens tomorrow um, you know we'll get up and see how Andy's feeling and hopefully he'll be feeling better and he'll be up for a paddle and we can um, we can push on up the lake to the next spot <laughs> 